decoration of my great-great-grandfather's $7,000 hoarder house. I moved into this property five years ago and I've spent the last several thousand hours of my free time picking up over a million pounds of scrap metal and clearing out the entire inside of the house. Upon completion of that project, I decided I was going to fully restore my great-great-grandfather's mansion. So I did one last tour around the house. I cleaned all my stuff out and we got to work up in the attic. So we decided to rip out all the wood, suck out all the old insulation, spray foam everything, and tear out the original oak hardwood floors in the upstairs. So today we are gonna be addressing the mess in the house and we're also gonna be making more mess. We currently have all the trim from the ceiling and the walls down on the floor downstairs and we have these piles of wood everywhere. We need to get those picked up so that way we can start to rip into this old plaster. We need to get this ripped off, get all the studs on the inside exposed so that way we can see what we're working with for walls. And then upstairs, we already have all the walls completely gutted but we just tore up the hardwood floors up here and a lot of it was junk so we're simply just gonna be pitching it out the window. Pretty much every room has a pile just like this one. North bedroom, northwest bedroom, the hallway, this room, and then last but not least, the DJ studio, Justin's favorite room. Yeah. First thing for us to get started, we need to get the dump truck out, and we're simply just gonna back it right beside the house, and Justin pitch everything out the window, and we can sit and watch him. Hey, hey, well, are you winded? Hey, are you about got this done yet? Yeah. Quit running around. <laughs> We get paid by the hour. Slow down. My gloves. You don't need them. You don't need gloves. It's time for you to have man hands. Ah, safety first. Put my gloves on. Justin, why are you cutting these? To make them easier to throw into the truck. Cool. Why do you think Justin cutting those planks down? Justin's getting paid by the hour. He's just taking his time. That's a correct answer. <laughs> Go and dump this flooring. We got our first dump and we're not fully done upstairs yet. There's a lot of wood up there. How do you like your steak cooked, Justin? Steak? Yeah. Uh, medium rare. Okay. We were just seeing what kind of person you were. Delivery of 
have some more materials. So we kind of got our whole material stack. In the back we got two by fours and we got two by sixes in the middle. And then here we have some more two by sixes for the ceilings and the upstairs. And then we have these big honkers, which are called a micro lamb. A micro lamb is basically just a bunch of thin pieces of wood smashed together. You can see all the different layers in here. And then they put a glue between them, they smash them down, and it makes a really, really, really strong board. So there's two reasons why somebody would use a micro lamb. Number one, they need a board that is incredibly strong. Since this is layers on layers on layers of material, it's a lot stronger than just a regular solid piece of wood. The second reason why somebody would use them, if they need to span a really wide span, such as above the garage door right here, we have one that's holding the roof of the building up above the door. If we had a regular board up there, we would have to have a tree that long, which sometimes that can be hard to find, where if we have a micro lamb, they can just glue a bunch of stuff together. They can basically make it as long as they like. Now with all advantages comes disadvantages. There's two disadvantages to a micro lamb. The first one is these things are like five times more expensive than a regular board. And then secondly, not a single guy job moving these things around. One of these 14 footers right here, I wouldn't be surprised if it weighs couple hundred pounds. What we're throwing out right now is all the trim that was in this room. Now from the outside, it looks like it's in really good condition, but then once we get exposed to what was behind, this sheet, for example, must have had some water damage or humidity damage or something, but it's all puckered up and it's actually bowed big time. So this sheet is absolutely no good. And we have several of the baseboard pieces that look exactly like this. So being able to reuse any of it and have anything match, it's not gonna happen. Well, let's get and deliver those boards to the boys. They are stacking all the wood from the trailer that we just loaded into the heated shop here at Coles. And we're just gonna put these trim boards all together with the rest. me when we started today that it was going to take three people most of the day just to get all of the wood that used to be on the wooded floor out of the upstairs and all of the old rotten trim and stuff that was no good down here completely cleaned out i would not have believed you but it's taken that long now that we got things kind of cleaned out a little bit we're just trying to get stuff hooked up so that way we actually have some lights down here and we can see I think he does this on purpose. Since we removed all the ceiling trims that are in the downstairs rooms, they had lights that were plumbed inside of them. And when we removed the ceiling stuff, we ended up cutting those wires, which cut our electrical supply down here. So we don't have any more lights. So now we have these little things that we plugged in on a cord and then it gives us lights. And Roman, stop. This is not a party. So now that we got everything cleaned up and we also have lights in here, we are ready to start demoing the plaster and lath on these interior walls. And I'm gonna show you the best way to do it. So the fastest way to tear plaster and lath off is we need a sledgehammer and then we're simply just gonna turn it sideways and we're just gonna break up the wall so it's spider cracks everywhere. Once it's all spider cracked, then we're gonna take our potato fork and we're just gonna take it right behind those. And just, it rips it right off the wall. You can do a wall in three minutes with two guys if you're really moving but 10 minutes with one person if you're focused easy to do final touch before we make a big mess I'm gonna sweep all this up I know it sounds like it looks like it doesn't make sense but it's just nice to have an even nice surface without crunch crunch at least for a little bit until we have a big piles of 
trash again here. We did end up throwing a lot of stuff out of the house, the old woodwork and stuff that was cracked, broken, bent, and just not good. We loaded that up on the dump truck. But the stuff that was good, we have in the shed here, we have it on the trailer, we're gonna stack it in here. If we use it, we'll use it. If we don't, at least we have the option. We don't fully know what the inside design of the house is gonna finalized look yet, but it's one of those things. It's not gonna hurt anything here in the back of the shed and at least it gives us some options. I knew they were not working. We got it done, thanks for your help. Done, thanks for the help. Oh. You guys got it done. Well, I, I wanted to help you so much, and but well, unfortunately, it's it's over now. All right, here we go. Look at this mess. Justin did a great job making this mess. And he's gonna be the one cleaning it all up, right? No, then it falls on you. No, you, clean up you, you made a mess, you clean it up. In any way, this room is next. <laughs> We're gonna move this piece of history of 1917. That There's actually a sticker that says when it was built. Oh and we're gonna move it into safer room which is that one for now make a mess here and just keep moving all this stuff to preserve it we just got tearing into the walls to rip them apart and i feel bad because now i have a meeting with a crop insurance adjuster and then i have some work i need to do and then i have meetings all day tomorrow as well so i'm gonna have Two days here where we're gonna be leaving Justin and roaming to tearing out that lath and plaster. That's not a fun job to do and I feel bad leaving him do it, but I also have to take care of farm stuff. So, <laughs> Justin and Roman, thank you. I owe you a cosmic brownie. <laughs> knocking down the plaster I noticed some of the spots will of the wall are softer than others and that's because we have studs here every 16 inches so wherever you hit between the studs the wall is actually gonna flex so when we hit with a sledge on the left it does this it flexes but plaster is a brittle material it cannot flex it cracks Therefore, when we hit the middle of the lath, the plaster just crumbles off and layers of it just fall off. And now we can easily remove our plaster off of lath because it's no longer attached. Justin and I getting closer and closer to getting this whole first floor being free of plastered. We have the ceiling left 
And this tiny little room that used to be Cole's office and we'll be done. I might look weak and taking a lot of breaks but I'm trying to be cautious because in uh, in two days I'll have an arm wrestling tournament where I have to lose nine pounds so life always gets in the way but we're trying to do our best to keep the family going keep the channel and life going and being an athlete dad and husband and all of the things above just never give up and just keep pushing it's all worth it It is the next day of our progress taking the plastered and flat down. We have this little room to do and then we'll be concentrating on taking all the left down out this window. trying to take it as easy as we can. Justin is still hurting from yesterday. I have a tournament tomorrow which I'm gonna be traveling to today. It's a six hour drive. Plus, like I said, I need to cut nine pounds. I have four more pounds to go. There, it's 24 hours of no food, no liquids. Hopefully I'm gonna lose it all and so it's gonna be a long day for me of working, no eating, no drinking and driving. We need a skid steer that's gonna be parked outside by the window so we can dump all of the plaster in here and then into the dump truck. Next step, we're gonna get all this plaster off of our floor into skid loader bucket onto the truck. So now Roman is a shovel operator. Time to dump another bucket. Justin and Roman have been hard at work. They now have all of the plaster down on all the walls, all the ceilings downstairs. Look how much different the living room looks now. It's hardly recognizable. So now Justin is getting started, pulling some of this lath down. We're gonna try to get all these interior walls so we should be able to look all the way through here, straight to the back side of the house. And we lost Roman's help for the day because he has an arm wrestling competition to go to. So good luck, Roman. The roads are drivable, but only one lane, and the snow keeps creeping in across.
just plugging along, pulling down some laughs, and we know it started feeling a little cold in here, but for some reason, this kicked off. It says it's 60 degrees, it's supposed to be 70. We're gonna make a trip down to the boiler and see what we got. We're gonna make sure that the pilot light's still on. If that's not on, then we might not have gas outside. Which I can hear this running. It's on. If you look right up inside of there, you can see the pilot light, that blue light, that's fire. So if the boiler's on and the thermostat is not telling everything to circulate, yes, just like you do when anything else isn't working, you just pull the batteries out. Try it again. We got our goal for today. All the interior walls of the house are completely lath free now. I take that back as I come around the corner. I forgot to do that little spot right there. Looks like a big mess, but I tell you what, once you get it torn apart and you start looking at the wiring and stuff, it don't look safe at all. So it's a good thing to get her done. New wiring, the whole nine yards. I'm always amazed when you get a house pulled apart, how little it actually holds it together. I know, it. you do, and you think a windstorm or anything would, you know, just how they, these were good engineers that knew how to engineer to. I finally have hit the road. Some of you were asking in the comments, who is Roman, where did he come from? Roman is a husband, a father of three beautiful children, Christian believer that came from Ukraine in 2014 as a student, fell in love with this beautiful country and ever since he wanted to stay here. So God blessed us with all the people that have supported us and helped us throughout these nine years of struggle and legal process. And this year, God blessed us with a permanent residency. So now we get to stay and be a resident of this beautiful country. You may ask, where is he going with this? Well, we got our permanent residence through immigration process for extraordinary ability in sports and it happened to be in arm wrestling. So I guess I would be an extraordinary in arm wrestling. Good morning, good morning. This is the next day of my trip. I arrived yesterday all good at, at 10 p.m. Uh, got weighed in, got some food in my stomach and drinks and all that, rehydrated. And now I'm at the venue helping uh, set stuff up. So I thought I'll do some filming before it gets too crowded, too noisy. And to show you, what it looks like inside here. It's a local winery uh, on the outskirts of St. Louis. I've never been here before, but it looks like a nice place. The process to get in is pretty simple. There is registration desk, I'll show you in the video. Then you go way in, pay your entry fee, and then you just wait for arm wrestling, which is going to be happening on that stage behind me. So Illinois State Arm Wrestling Championship is a pretty big tournament. It has around 300, sometimes over 300 entries, and it's considered big. Entries meaning competitors showing up to this event and competing. So that's why we have four tables that are going nonstop since noon and go all the way till 6, 7, 8 p.m., sometimes even 9, 9 p.m depending how everything goes. But it's intense, a lot of things, a lot of matches happening. This place is getting cooler and cooler. Final preparation is actually getting coffee. Well, referee meeting before. I'm up next. My next matches are gonna be much more challenging there, like tough five ring guys. So we'll see what happens. Ready? Go! Ready? Go! Winner! Go! Ready? Go! Ah! We're 
about to start finals here. I, I am undefeated in the finals, right hand and left. Uh, the champion of the left hand, undefeated. I was thinking that we can get it as, as full as we can and then put the pallet and the fork through the skid steer and just keep shoving the, all the all the planks to the front so we don't have to carry it we're just gonna fill it in shove it forward fill it in shove it forward I keep telling Roman I don't know if it's there's just an English to Ukrainian barrier but we get paid by the hour around here we want to take as long as possible to do things Roman's always just trying to rush around I don't know what I need to do to teach him. All right, now that we got all the interior walls down, it is time to pull the lath off the ceiling. We are on our last room of plaster now. That's the front entrance. This used to be the original entrance to the house. It had some water damage years ago. So this whole wall is not done anymore. So we're demoing the whole room. We got it done. We officially now have all the lath off of the ceiling. We have a beautiful subfloor system exposed above us for the second floor. All the wiring run through. We have 10 foot ceilings in here. So kudos to Justin and Roman for knocking everything down off the ceiling because that is a absolute shoulder workout. It's funny now that we have things off, just how things actually lay out behind the wall. The couch used to be sitting right here. You'd be sitting here watching a movie and you have the toilet flusher pipe <laughs> right behind your head. Little did you know, but it was literally that far away. Behind me is what used to be the office or what used to be the room that my grandpa was born in. We had a pocket door set up here. Come to find out now that we got things pulled apart, this is actually not a load bearing wall. So Justin got the pocket doors all ripped out. This wall is going to be rebuilt back at some point, but we might be moving it a little bit because looking below, the actual foundation of the house is like right here. It's like a foot away from where they built this wall. So why they didn't build that wall on top of the wall that actually holds up the house, we don't know. Who did that? Justin. Oh, Justin? Whatever is wrong here, Justin did. 
Come on, Justin. We got the back pantry completely gutted. This is the old parlor room. It's completely gutted. And we have one header downstairs that was actually done correctly. This one actually sits on top of the boards that transfer the weight straight down into the basement. The ones that they did over the tops of these pocket doors, they just simply took that board right there and then they nailed it to that top one there and then also to the sideboard. So it's kind of doing absolutely nothing. Then we got the living room. This is completely gutted. And we noticed an interesting thing. We have floor joists above us on 12 inch centers instead of 16s like they are in the upstairs. So they did that to help beef up that floor. So maybe we won't have to do as much work on that floor as we originally thought. I think it's pretty safe to say that lath and plaster is everybody's second least favorite job when doing an old house renovation. Everybody's least favorite job is pulling off the lath that has the rock wool loose fill insulation behind it because when you pull this off, all that insulation falls over. It's super dusty, it's super itchy, it's super messy, and it's super not a lot of fun. And that's the job that we have next. But that's gonna be for another day. And I just wanted to mention, if you wanna help support the project on what we're doing here with renovating the house. Head to cornstar.farm. You can pick up some Cornstar Farms merch. All the proceeds go right into the house project here that we're doing. But that's all we got for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.